Hello, so I decided to do another video, um, or another reading basically, and uh, that's from my book, it's called Read It Rawly, The Gifts of Life, and uh, I wrote the book and published it when I was 18, it's about 10 years after that now, and so I'm sort of re-experiencing the book, I do comment in between. Uh, it's not just some boring reading, or I hope not. And so, you know, for me, it's for me, it's for you, it's for everybody. If you want a copy of the book, you can Google it, or you can reach out to me, and uh, we can organize that. I give you one that is signed and that has personally, has been personally inscribed in by me. And um, if you're up for some kind of video chat. Let me know, okay? I will put it in the comments how you can reach me, okay? You don't have to feel alone. You don't have to feel alone. You don't have to be alone. And, um, you know, we are all here together. We might as well connect. Well, that's just I'm putting that out there. It's an offer. If it's just an offer, then it's that. But, um, yeah. Okay. Okay, let's start. There's a gift in being reminded as well as being capable of reminding. There's also a gift in the capacity to appreciate the existence of reminders. Loss is not a gift in itself, but it is the reminder of the gift we had. And sometimes loss accentuates the importance of a gift in such a way that we become able to value it even more after it's gone. Have I ever told you about butterflies? I love that. They have an especially big significance for me. When I was little, my mom and I used to water the garden together. Our front garden had a large crop of sunflowers, which she gracefully planted, even though the guinea fowls destroyed them for seeds. Guinea fowls are birds that obviously love sunflower seeds, and um, she would always get like happy and puffy and upset um, that they took the seeds, but you know, she grew like sunflowers that were like over my head, um, and she kept planting the seeds and she would get so frustrated but nonetheless it was still good memories we laughed i was super young but like of my memories and going like that young it's a pretty good memory to have. um during spring and summer i remember joyfully running through the flowers I would often look up and observe how dreamily the butterflies were outlined by the soft blue sky. My mother loved sunflowers, any kind of flower in fact, but she had a larger connection to butterflies. On a particular day she told me about her mother. She told me that her mother also had a love for flowers, but she said after her mother died butterflies would follow her everywhere. Each butterfly naturally became a reminder that her mother was still with her and that she would be alright and that she was not alone. Even though I was very young, I felt so special that she shared that with me. Whenever I would see a butterfly, I would show her and together we would watch it flutter weightlessly with inglorious transcendence. Originating from the awe of butterflies, a significant bond was created between us. And I think that is a way that I am reminded of her whenever I see a butterfly. Isn't it fascinating that something so simple is naturally passed on to the next generation? So, um, j so w whenever, it's true, basically, what I'm saying. I put in my book, um... And I wrote my book uh, after my mom died, and um, and I want to go on about that, but I'm not going to. I'm just so you know, it's not only me. I think I'm getting goosebumps. Um, 
whenever I saw a butterfly, I was like, whoa, I saw it instantly about my mom, and I got, like, reminded of her spirit, if I could say, and I, I would smile, it was like a reminder of who she was, and, like, a, a, you know, and I really did, uh, getting goosebumps, anyway, and I told a lot of people, I told a lot of people this, and, um, even, and, and, and sometimes people would, like, maybe if they're with me and they would see a butterfly, they'd be like, Dolly, look, and, um, we'd, bo like, we'd both, or we'd all, um, just be like, oh, that's my mom, <laughs> um, but we'd basically look at the butterfly and be like, cool, so, and then a lot of people would message me and, like, say, um, uh, I saw a butterfly the other day, and, um, that, reminded me of your mom and so I thought I'd message you and um and I was just smile at that like that is not me like how can I, I don't train the butterflies to fly around and like like and like add joy to people's life and then they message me that's not how my messaging system works so um there's something special about that and it is special to my mom and um she was like, do you know joie de vivre? It is joy of life. If anyone was like a person of joie de vivre, that was my mother. And so, yeah. Um, anyway, um, still to this day, whenever I see a butterfly, sometimes I, I know that I have not seen a butterfly in quite long. And I feel like a little bit sad and um ironically enough a lot of those times a butterfly is almost like around the corner because like but like in the most perfect timing that I wouldn't expect a butterfly would just come where, wherever I am and then I would just be like you know like I don't know some kind of peace And I just think that's amazing. And we all, that's like, that is like the love that's in the air. That's like the love that is in all things. It's like the, the big love, agape. It's like that love that is so big, it's like consciousness. It's like that. Um... I've lost many things, but the biggest loss was my mom. And during the process, I involuntarily lost myself. I miss the girl I used to be. I miss my mom, and I miss us together even more. I still cannot seem to wrap my head around her death. She was the last person to deserve not only an early death, but, a brut but the brutal way she died. Every time I think of it, my eyes tear up. There is nothing that makes any of it okay with me. There was no need for her to suffer like that. And what hurts more is that the, that people don't know the half of it. I was in it with her. Not behind her, not in front of her, not beside her like everybody else. I was in it with her. And no one will know what that is like. Not even I can explain what that is like. It is perplexing how some things in life make such an impact on you. The strength of, these, of the things that can occur when we least expect it is astronomical, especially when it involves the death of an angel on earth. But luckily, there is strength in the support that reminds us of the positive contribute. Especially after all what you've gone through and after all that you thought was gone. Like yin yang, there's always something good in the bad and vice versa. In this case, the positive reminders are the good. She was my light love and blessing. She personified an essence and a zest so infectious that one could never ignore her presence. That is true. Um, 
when she walked into her room, like, when she, like, when I was with other people, you know, like, let's say on the beach, and she walked it in, she walked past, it was like, we were all, like, uh, the, like, shining, she was shining from inside of her, she was that, like, just, yeah, just like, her soul was so beautiful, that it just was like, just, she, just beautiful, yeah, and, um, it's not only, I'm, I'm not the only one to describe it like that. She was so stunning. She was so stunning. Like, wow. And she loved, she just loved. Just a blessing. <laughs> um, who touched her motherly love and sparkling eyes contributed to her nurturing compassion. Her melodious voice, disheveled bed hair and perfectly aged skin could never compare to the beauty of the positive energy that constantly surrounded her. She had such a loveliness and joy of life and youthfulness that never faded. I miss her easy smile and crackling laugh that made everything light and wistful. I miss her comedic stubbornness, never-ending fight and exceptional willpower. She was my person. I appreciate the fact that I played a part of the enlightening life she lived. I can only hope the same type of experience for the rest of the world. The unfortunate thing, though, was that by being part of her life, I realized that mine had become fulfilled. That is why when she died, I felt as if I did too. After she passed, I experienced a sharp pang of the unexpected loss of purpose. Yes, as said before, at least I am still able to remember, and at least I am reminded. But I feel as if I broke so terribly that I can never stick back together, no matter how much I am reminded. That... Okay, I don't want to interrupt myself here, but I can say that this is me, but I am now 10 years older. I am still here. It took a long grieving process. I mean long. I mean long. And I also had issues that I had to sort out and that too. And I was lost. I would like... Yeah, I, I'm not even going to go into that. I mean, within 10 years, uh, that's a lot. Like, um, that is for a super long conversation, possibly many, but I've lived quite a full life, which is but something I'm saying now. Um, but I understand, though, what I'm saying when I say here that I felt that as she died, my life... And I was, I was young, 18, and I thought that my purpose in life was to be a part of hers, and that once, that after, that when she died, I thought that I had fulfilled my purpose in life. I was so, I, I can't explain exactly what that means, but I think that I felt like I didn't know who I was, I was, I uh, felt lost, but also... It, it was that <laughs> we had some religious it was a, she was a part of me just like I was a part of her and um, I didn't know anything I didn't know what to think how to think I'd never been through that before most like most other kids my age even kids older than me I was a lifeguard back in the day so I and the surfer, but it, and <laughs> a lot of things. But I um, was often in the company of people that are way older, but still young in my sort of in my age group. Um, I always got on with older people, but and they were also too young <laughs> to sort of be able to give me advice. Like, um, yeah, I, I. And wh how, what did I know? I was 18 in, like, I was at the end of high school. And um, what would I know? So, 
Yeah, I mean, and not anybody else really knew or gone had gone through that. And now, now it's different. Now, and this is now 10 years after. I mean, uh, I can speak of a handful of people, uh, but of people that I know that have lost parents, um, who have spoken to me, who have come to me in that time and said, I know how you feel. I know how you felt. Um, I don't know. People sort of feel that it's safe to come to me, and it is. It is. It is. I've been through that, and um, yeah, I think I feel obligated to say now that if you are grieving, if you've experienced like a loss in your life, maybe you lost a loved one or someone that has made an impact on you. Um, just some practical advice please take care of yourself um you gotta eat you gotta sleep when you wake up make your bed get dressed brush your teeth shower take a walk and don't forget to eat don't forget to hydrate Take it easy on yourself, but not so easy where you ne- where you don't care for yourself. So, literally, as I just said, plus going outside, that's important too, because that is what I always suggest. That five minutes a day, go outside, you look up, you, s- you look at the sky and see what you can see. You will see something. It's that action of looking up. And for that moment, you are going to experience something that you didn't make, but you can discover and you can sort of be away from your own mind and your own own everything. You can have that sense of awe. And then, in, I mean, it can be more than five minutes, but for five minutes at least. And then you can sit down and apply the practice, peace, be still. So you're just sitting there and you just are. And it can be difficult. It can, it can really be difficult. But just sort of breathe, like an intentional breathing. Um, you know, um, if you go outside to breathe, makes sense. And try and think of something that you are grateful for. You can literally look around you and think, oh, well, it, hmm, well I'm looking at, um, at a drawer now, so I'm thinking, and I'm not outside, but I'm using this as an example. I'm thinking, it's pretty nice. It's like a loose... Um, a loose sort of um, display in here the drawers are loose basically and it's quite a nice sort of um, vibe and I like the structure of the bedside table and I'm grateful that I have this because you know quite a few things stand on this bedside table and um if I didn't have it, I think that I would struggle a little bit more, or I'd need to try and get one. Um, but I'm grateful that this is here, and this also has the bottom basket which connects two plugs, and I'm grateful for that as well. And I'm grateful for the electricity that I have here when there is no load shedding, because this is South Africa. Um, sorry. But anyway, you can do it outside. You can, there's hopefully a bird. I mean, I love the birds. I can hear them in the background. Um, Like, there will be a bird. You can just listen to the sound of the bird. I think, you know, that's so amazing. Um, It's it's something to be grateful for. And um, it's just beautiful by itself and it just is natural and 
it is not harming you and um, you can just be in that moment, breathe, look up, have a cup of coffee maybe and then you can do what you feel like doing. Just remember that self-care please, that is really really important, really really important and um, yeah. Breathing isn't just a phrase, so um, there's science <laughs> behind it. So breathing actually does help you. I suggest that you go check out. Um, you can check out uh, Vim Hof on YouTube. You can um, even go listen to some information um, on Andrew Huberman's podcast. Um, you can do some um, guided breathing exercises um, or meditative practices. Uh, you can try, John Vivek, he does some meditative practices on YouTube. Um, so does Eckhart Tolle. Uh, you know, you, <laughs> I can't even think of everybody who does it, but... Um, yeah, you can you can hook up with that and yeah, but otherwise <laughs> just just breathe in and hold it just hold there just a little it, that you almost feel like it's up in you and then I'm almost breathing twice again. Let it go and so it's out. And, um, yeah, that action, that reaction, that thing that is something to be grateful for, and this mechanism, which is your body, is also included. That, 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 this, this, you. Breathing helps to circulate the blood around the body can, that can then help your muscles and therefore you to relax. Breathing is also something that can help with your breathing <laughs> and with stress and all kinds of things. To take notice uh, of your breath and become conscious of it is comforting. And uh, then there's a, you know, there's a lot of, you know, in the time where you're like, ah, if you could just pause for a second, step back, so yeah, I take notice, I step back, I take a pause, I take notice of my breath, I go come back into frame and that's like a fast forward version where I come back in a little bit better of a right mind and I feel less da -da -da, red and I'm back in the frame um and yeah I just you can look up on it and um it is a, just a pretty and amazing thing um breathing one breath if you just think of one breath how <laughs> like I mean I've explained this before but um, anyway as a lifeguard but I mean um, I got my first aid but anyway in CPR um, you give two breaths to to the person you're trying to um, resuscitate and I'm just gonna leave that there because I'm just thinking of that and I'm feeling like yeah it is literally like of life 
in so many different ways. You can use your braid to sight to help save another person's life. You can use your braid to, to help in your life. You can um, notice other people's breath and think, I'm so glad they are alive. And um, you can even, like, I think of my mom's last breath as um, quite significant because uh, I was with her in, in, in those last moments. Um, for days and days and then the last couple of hours and then the lo every moment until I held her I held her as she passed away and her last breath was in and then it was out and at that this is what I noticed and very like just just last year probably when I noticed it um and it came back, well, I think I was busy processing a lot of stuff in therapy. I advocate for therapy, but um, that's a different discussion. I have a very good therapist, um, and uh, he's, he's quite unique, and he wor we work well together. And um, uh, I, I progress a lot. It's actually practically helping in my life and that is showing up in my life and in my being and yes I'm okay and I'm good and um so I was I was processing a lot of things and um something was interesting to me about my mom's death I thought I was thinking of breath and all the stuff that I mentioned to you and I thought I I, I, I thought what, my memory is sort of different now um, my connotation to her last breath was not something tragic. Um, so what I'm describing here, basically, is that when she took her last breath, I felt like she died and some, something I also died. And that I had no purpose, my purpose was fulfilled. So in that way, you can understand that I felt and thought that I had died um, because that was that was basically me and my life till then and that death was necessary in order for me to grow because um, you know grow, I had to like grow up very quickly um, after that um, like people would often say you know you're so strong and I would often feel like, no, I'm not. But, um, and I would often think, like, why does everybody think that I'm this strong person? I guess, you know, um, I can be quite strong, but I'm not, <laughs> um, not all the time. And as getting, as I'm much older, you know, um, <laughs> you know, I can be strong, but I mean, I can also be vulnerable. <laughs> Or, um, uh, I don't like to say the word weak, but I mean, strong, weak, uh, I can be both. Um, and then there's a balance between the two. And I like that. Um, anyway, um, so then I continue to say, yes, I said before, at least I'm still able to remember. And at least I am reminded but I feel as if I broke so terribly that I can never stick back together, no matter how much I am reminded. So, recap. Um, I can. I have, and I wish I could have told this younger self, this person. Um, that... Everything would be okay, but that that doesn't pertain to me right now. Every I can say that everything did turn out to be okay. So I'm kind of saying that to you. Um, everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay, and I hope you know what I mean by that. I mean that you have a future, and that future is a good one. I believe it's good.
I don't control your future, but I know that you have one. And so, no matter how you feel right now, you got to keep going. Keep going, keep growing. As a person, in your age, um, in the areas of your life that you can, just don't give up. You can't give up. That's not an option. No giving up. What is that? Giving up? No. Mm -mm. Not a thing. And um, keep on keeping on. And that I continuously say to a lot of people, and I believe in it, and I will always encourage other people to do that. Um, if you need a hand, reach out, like, speak, reach out, try to communicate. You are not alone. It is, like, you're seriously not alone. This video, most of my videos, I hope, uh, proves that. I tend to... You, like explain it a lot you're really not alone you know why if you if you come upon this or if you come upon my book um or like via instagram whatever you will know that i've said to you you are not alone why i can give you one example i'm with you i'm with you in the sense that i'm aware of other people and how they can feel alone like they are the only one feeling that way or like they are truly just genuinely alone on this earth and that everything is doomed and things like that no 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 you are put in this life for a reason the fact that you are breathing means you matter you are here you are not alone there are other people in your life good people and you are ultimately, what I would like to believe in every person is, is that they're good. And uh, why are we all here together on this earth? Why is it not just one person? For this very reason. You're not meant to be alone. You can't be alone for too long even. Your survival instinct literally kicks in you need to contact someone you need you know you need to get to another person and just talk even if it's a stranger sometimes um it's the opposite sometimes i feel like that and i go out just so that i can listen to other people and that is um, a very interesting practice um uh, why do i call it a practice is because um you know, I do it even um, if I don't have to. I do it um, even if I, like, feel maybe a bit... Maybe I'm being selfish. I even do it then because I reorient myself. And um, I like to try and be kind. And, and sometimes, you know... And this is, again, I'm linking all of this. my through line, yeah. Um, I'm linking all of this to, like, I literally... I I will go and listen to another person um, so that they don't feel alone. They feel heard. Um, I sometimes ask a stranger, um, what's up? So I notice these things. I'm awake. I'm aware. I can see. Um, I actually look. I'm concerned. I'm, I, I try to keep up with what is around me. Not in a, like, um, what's that word? Paranoid, paranoid, not in a paranoid type of way, in a way that, yeah, I'm walking in life, okay, away with care, and a way that what I've been through <laughs> could be something someone else, someone else has been through, and that we are here all together to connect. And sometimes there's disconnection, sometimes miscommunication. Nowadays, language is so difficult because it's really, all the words have been kind of used and used and used. So it's difficult sometimes for both people to understand what one word actually means. Um, and uh, so <laughs> I, I don't know, I should 
probably not say we're going through a language crisis, but um, it is difficult to um, either come up with new vocabulary or say words in such a way that it's okay. <laughs> and, um, well, yeah, and most certainly I hope that it's okay. <laughs> and that I made it kind of clear that you're not alone. You feel free to reach out. And um, sometimes, um, if you feel that you can't reach out, then go out and um, see what's up with someone else and just listen to them. Maybe that's what you need. Again, it, um, it involves communication, I think, and sort of that's I suppose, your confirmation for, like... You're not alone because you seem to find some, I'm going to coin a term, resonancy between you and another person. Or like confirmation and realization and this communication back and forth and you know you're not alone. So it's like, con it's like, and you are and you're being and it's with another person. So it's this memories, they're responding to you. There's communication happening in that moment everything is sort of like stuff is happening and it's true that is truth uh, you're not alone and so yeah I hope that proves my point I hope I haven't gone on for too long about that okay um not even finished reading, so I'll just continue reading without interrupting myself, and then, um, yeah, okay, so there's a monkey flying around here, what is left of me wants to be with her, and I can't seem to let go of the belief that the end and virtual death of me will resort to our reunion among other things. Now, when I said virtual there, this is 10 years ago, so it's a 10 years ago meaning of the word virtual. Um, I'm still here though, so I guess this disturbing scenario forms part of my distressing inner winter storms that may or may not ever disappear. They disappear. Perhaps I should attempt to allow these conflictions to escape me, or attempt to find a way to deal a way to a way what 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 a way to deal with them, instead of continually straining to avoid them. Loss is a part of me now, but I must remember that I have not lost the reminders. I am still standing. I am okay. I am not alone. My mom is with me somehow. I must believe it. I must keep the connection. I must commit to surviving because there is a chance, there is still a chance that I could obtain what I yearned for without ending my life. That is what I said there. I shared a profound thing there when I was 18 years old. And I'm going to carry on. I'm nearly done. And I'm still standing. I'm still here. And I'm telling you. The, I'm just telling you. To be able to improve, I should adopt the habit of reminding myself of the possibility that a select few remaining useful pieces of me could be mended right here, on this planet, alive. To gain the most benefit out of all of this, I suppose I should contribute additional effort into maintaining the mentality of being open-minded to possibilities I may achieve whilst alive. Simply put... I need to use the gift of reminder. And that's that's how I end off that chapter. And so, um, this chapter particularly, when people, when friends of mine, um, uh, of my age at that time, when it was published, read it, they, they, um, they said to me that they struggled. They really, and I understand why. I understand why. I really do. Um, so they struggle to read through that. They struggle to read through that chapter. Um, and um, there's a couple of other chapters that they also struggle to read through. Um, but, I mean, this book is not for the lighthearted. It is, 
it's a process it's a way it's lots of different all different chapters some chapter i think i've got two or three chapters that are a page long less than a page but it all forms part of the way of how i wrote the book and how, how one experiences the book and you come out better um i should hope so and i'm sharing this again and i'm experiencing it again and um i'm kind of tired now because <laughs> i made a second video but um i was so enthusiastic after i made the first one and before that i was feeling not very um motivated or inspired to do um to do any of that and i thought uh -uh. <laughs> um that is not a part of me that I would like. Um, so I thought I better do something. I mean, just like push through my, um, which was just me feeling sort of shyness or my insecurities. So I did that and I made two. And I'll post them both. And so you're not alone. I'm here with you. If you want to reach out, you are welcome to. But I hope that you gleaned something good from something that I said or read. <laughs> okay, cool. You are worthy. You gotta know that.